Hey guys, it's Trevor. Grab your Bibles. Let's go through the Word. So today we are going to be in Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 26. And in it Paul writes, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. So we see here in this passage, Paul is basically giving his readers an inside look into what sanctified, Holy Spirit-inspired decision-making looks like. So at the beginning of chapter 2, Paul in verse 3 cautions the Philippians to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. So in this passage that we just read, Paul provides an example, as he often does, from his own life and decision-making process of what this looks like. So verse 21 is an often quoted verse. If you've been around church at all, you've probably heard it a lot. Again, it says, for to, to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So what does Paul mean by this? Fortunately, it's right there in the text. So let's look through that. So he says, to live as Christ means fruitful labor, and he will continue to glorify the name of Jesus in the Philippian community and the world at large through this fruitful labor that he continues. So that's what he points at, and that's what he means by to live as Christ. Now, to die as gain is probably a strange thing for a person of the flesh, a worldly person to hear, but... That means that upon death, Paul will be able to depart to be with Christ, which in this passage he even says is far better. So what's his conclusion? What, What decision does he make here? He concludes that it's better to remain in the body, which initially is a bit surprising considering the lead up there. And that's for the good of the Philippian community and the other churches that God has used him to establish. So Paul realizes that being with the Philippians will continue their progress and joy in the faith, and uh, ultimately that's going to cause their boasting in Christ to continue, to abound, to flourish. So two big takeaways I want to have from this passage here, these six verses we just read. So Paul knew ultimately that uh, being with Christ was where he wanted to be the most. He said it's far better. Yet, he provided an example that would really set the precedent for what he talks about in the next chapter, in chapter 3. In that moment, he knew it was better for the Philippian community for him to remain on this earth. Um, Be released from prison, obviously submitting to the Lord's will. That was his goal there and serve them to the glory of God, again. So, how we can apply that to ourselves, while the Lord blesses us with time here on this earth, we have to have that same mindset. We have to aim to serve those God has placed in front of us to serve and to glorify Him through it. Also, Paul was in full submission to God's sovereignty throughout all of this. And we should be as we live for his glory as well. Um, Paul acting like this is his decision would be laughable to Caesar. Um, But, um, and just a reminder, Caesar was the one who imprisoned him. But Paul knew that God's will would prevail. And he was convinced that he was meant to stay alive in that moment and continue ministering to the Philippians and to the other churches that he had planted. Nonetheless, Paul's aim was to glorify God through either life or death. He was in full submission to the will of God. So, let us serve others sacrificially, seek to glorify God, and submit to his will 
as we live out our faith day by day. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for the example that Paul sets in his writing. I pray that we redeem every moment you bless us with because you have redeemed us, that we serve others, that we glorify your name, that we spread the gospel as far and wide as we possibly can, but also under the understanding that we should not fear death because to be with you, Jesus, is far better than anything this world has to offer. But while we have time on this earth, the time that you've sovereignly given us, I pray that we use it to love others um, and to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. I pray that you guide us through your spirit. We love you more than anything. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell.